<laughs> Good afternoon. This is a public meeting of the Indiana Arts Commission Region 8 Combined Arts Organization and Arts Project Support Fiscal Year 20 Grants Panel. I'm Jan Mills. I'm the chair of the Brown County Community Foundation Board of Trustees uh, and a Region 8's partner uh, from Nashville, Indiana. Today is May 4th and we are meeting by conference call and streaming live from a webinar. We welcome applicants who may be listening in today and would like to remind you that you are muted for this review. There's no direct contact or conversation about the evaluation and disposition of, of the applications before, during, or after the panel meeting. At this time, we would like the panelists and staff to introduce themselves, stating their name, their occupation, and where they are from in the state. Uh, panelists, Alain Barker, would you please begin for us? Yeah, hi everybody. I'm, I'm Alain Barker. I'm from Monroe County. I am uh, at Indiana University in the Jacobs School of Music as Director of Entrepreneurship and Career Development. Thank you. Jamie Sweeney, please. Hi, I'm Jamie Sweeney. I am the um, owner of an art gallery in Owen County called Juniper Art Gallery, and I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. Uh, Bryony Gomez Palacio. Bryony? Hi, good afternoon. I'm Bryony Gomez Palacio, chair to the Bloomington Arts Commission and a graphic designer in Bloomington, Indiana. Thank you. Rebecca Ball? Hi, <clears throat> I'm from uh, Brown County and um, I recently retired from the Area 10 Enright Center. Um, which is the senior center that offers um, art programs. Thank you. Rowena Cross Najafi. Hi, yeah, I'm Rowena Cross Najafi. I'm from Lawrence County. I'm a retired foreign service officer and currently the president and de facto director of the Lawrence County Museum in Bedford. Thank you. And Sean Hildreth. Hi, I'm Sean Hildreth. I'm the marketing communications an outreach officer at the Brown County Community Foundation, and I'm from Seymour, Indiana. Thank you. And now the staff, please, from the Indiana Arts Commission. Hi, I'm Kate Sharp, Deputy Director of Programs for the Indiana Arts Commission, just here to just oversee the process. And I'm Chapin Schnick, I uh, work with the Arts Commission. I'll be tech support today, and I happen to be located in Martinsville myself. Larry? Yes, I'm Larry Peugeot. I am the, uh, I'm retired from the Brown County Community Foundation, and I am uh, still acting as the regional arts partner. And I thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Larry. Now we'll begin the panel review. This is how the process will work. I will announce the application we will review and ask the first reader to begin the discussion. The first reader will provide their assessment of the application based upon the evaluation criteria and their perspective. Panelists, please note that the applications do not need to be recapped since everyone has read it. Just provide your comments, please. After the first reader is finished, I will ask the second reader to present any new, additional, or opposing comments. We're not looking for consensus, just a full evaluation from the different perspectives panelists bring to the table. After the second reader has finished, I will open the discussion for final comments. Remember, in the interest of time, we are only looking for new, additional, or opposing viewpoints. If a panelist has a conflict of inter interest, that panelist will be placed on hold while the application is reviewed, and I will mention that at the beginning. We do have one conflict of interest situation, and that panelist will be moved to the waiting room during the discussion. Finally, once the application has been reviewed by the full panel, we ask the panel to update their scores in the online system. It's common for scores to change as a result of this broader discussion. The scores will save automatically. And I do not see your scoring, so I will ask if, there, if you need a little bit more time. So if you do, stick up your hand or something so I can see you and then I'll move along. Are there any questions? 
All right, if not, we'll begin. We'll start the with the first of our two arts organization support uh, applications. And the first is the Martinsville Arts Council. And the first reader is Alain Barker. Alain. Thank you very much. I'm gonna just get my notes up in front of me here. Um, so uh, Martinsville Arts Council uh, in Morgan County uh, is a very interesting organization. It's really great to see uh, what they're doing. They're a mixture of uh, producing activities um, with the Merrimack players. Uh, they do a lot of, uh, they sponsor a number of events and they've been a not-for-profit organization in the community since about 1980. Um, it's a volunteer board. Um, and I was struck by that because of the um, number of things that they do as an organization. And I'll come back to that in a little moment. Um, with the, uh, the, the financials look pretty good to me. Uh, they are expanding a little bit this year, going from 22 to 32,000. Uh, they rely heavily on the income from, from the theater performances at the Merrimack uh, Theater, which um, is great, um, so long as the Merrimack Theatre performances uh, continue to, to function healthily and well. Um, it was interesting in the, uh, in the proposal to just sort of look under the hood a little bit to see how they're functioning and maybe perhaps one of the challenges that they're faced with right now, which is the physical facility, the, dip, the depot, depot theatre that needs um, quite a bit of work on it. So that's something that's going to be some that, that they're going to be focusing um, on over the next little while. Um, their community engagement is strong. It's nice to see that they're connecting with a number of organizations in town, uh, YMCA being one of them. And they also feel that they're looking more and more now to social service organizations as a way of developing their programming in the community. They are committed to serving as wide um, uh, uh, selection of the community as possible, including uh, drama scholarships and, and activities for children during the summer. Um, the one thing that I, I w was looking for and hoping for was a little bit more data specifically on the outcomes of all of their activities, how to measure uh, their programming with an assessment of the success of what they do in the community. Um, and then I was also think I was looking through some of their marketing um, and web presence, um, thinking that perhaps being the sorts of organization that they are, being such an anchor, a cultural anchor in the community, that they could do a little more to look at their uh, marketing materials um, and make sure that there is a sort of a, a comprehensive um, uh, overview of what the organization does within the community that, that really carries that message into the community more effectively. And that takes me back to the question of, of the volunteer board and whether um, as an organization as large as this and having such an uh, outsized influence on arts activity in the community, it would make sense for them to start looking now at perhaps a part-time administrator so that they can professionalize their um, administrative activities in the organization as they grow forward. But overall, I gave it uh, very high marks. Um, it's an organization with a lot of passion, uh, with a real commitment to the community, has been around for a while. And uh, overall, I, I came out feeling very strong about this organization. Great, thank you. <clears throat> the second reader, Rebecca Ball. Um, hello, I was uh, very impressed with the board involvement and the com community partners and programs that were offered. Um, there wasn't any specific description of the artists that were involved, but you could see the artist that was in the um, board of directors list um, and felt very comfortable with that. Um, I think it's a great project. Um, going to, the, um, the community en engagement from volunteers is amazing. Um, and the wonderful artistic quality is projected through the links that was provided. I was impressed with that. Um, and my thought that came to mind in uh, reviewing this is, is that it really takes a community um, to do such an outstanding project. Thank you. 
So, if, if I may, I want to just quickly throw in one more comment here. Um, with their with their arts activity again being as impressed as I was, um, I was wondering what their relationship might be with the education institutions in Martinsville, the school system in particular, and wondering whether that would be an area for them to focus on going forward as well. Thank you. Are there any additional or other viewpoints from any of the other panelists? All right, if not, um, please finalize your scores and update your online comments and we'll take a few minutes and then we'll move on to the next. Does anyone need additional time? All right, if not, we'll move to, this, to the second application. This is the Brown County Art Guild. Uh, Rowena, you are the first reader. Rowena, you're muted at the moment. Sorry, let me start over. So I thought this was a really impressive um, proposal. The Brown County Art Guild has a, just a wonderful history. Um, that story of Carl Graff and Marie Goff and, and so on is a real special part of local history. So um, I came into this inclined to really like this proposal. Um, observation on the board, it's a, it's a really new board. I don't know if there's a story there or not, but it seems like a little institutional memory would, would add some expertise and diversity to their board. Um, they talk about gender balance and professional backgrounds. Um, they don't really mention any other measure of diversity, but there's a real variety of experience among the board members that I, I thought was, was a good thing. Um, the outreach to the community and their partnerships with other organizations in the community is a real strength. I would have liked some discussion of special needs audiences. Um, their marketing materials and their, their website and social media pages are just beautiful. They show a lot of style, subject matter, um, appeal to different audiences. They update their social media often, which is, is a real plus in reaching an audience. I didn't see much of a discussion of underserved populations. And when it came to goals and outcomes, the outcomes appear to just be enjoyment, you know, not, not really anything else. And I didn't see much of a discussion on the impact on the audience, the people who visit the gallery, or the people who participate in the activities. I think these historic exhibits in particular uh, provide a, a brand new perspective on the history of, Bryan, of Brown County, if you're not familiar with it. And that sets that exhibit apart from its neighbors. And it's, I think it's a real point of pride for Brown County residents. Uh, I would have you know, like to have seen something like that in the proposal. But all in all, it was a strong proposal and um, I, I gave it good marks. Thank you, Rowena. Uh, next, the second reader is Bryony Gomez Palacio. Bryony. Thank you. Um, I just also want to reiterate here that indeed I see a lack of idea, um, inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility in their thinking. They are in a pivotal moment with a new board and they seem to be having you know, new programming, new ideas. And I would like to see this be a major focus of this moment that they're, where they're moving forward. Uh, at the moment, I feel like there, there's a bit of an oversight there and hopefully it would be rectified um, because that will better connect them between the past and the future, which I think they're doing a great job through their programming, you know, not staying in, in reverence of the past, but acknowledging that that's their foundation and they need to move forward and connect with people in the present, but they could miss out on a large group. 
Okay. Thank you. Are there additional or, or uh, more diverse um, comments from any of the other panelists? If I may, I can just quickly jump in with one comment, and that is that uh, perhaps uh, just following on and building on the conversation that we're having, one of the areas that they could be looking at is education <clears throat> and a way to diversify their educational activity in, in the community and in the region to represent um, sort of engaged activity with a larger demographic. Um, and that would potentially sort of fold back into their strategic discussions because I, I, I'm excited by the fact that this is a relatively new board bringing in new ideas and probably with perspectives that have not been part of the organization for some time. And so this gives them an opportunity to do that. And, and perhaps one of the, the pathways toward um, a more responsive, more engaged um, organization within the community is through education. Yes, and they do mention that they're developing and providing workshops and educational programs such as camps and whatnot, but they do not go in enough detail um, in regards to them to give us a good grasp of what it is that it, they're covering. Thank you. Anything additional? If not, please finalize your scores and update your online comments and we'll go on to the next one in a couple of minutes. I just want to make a few comments and first, you know, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you so much. Um, I do want to mention to avoid any potential false expectations. Don't mention scoring. You could say like it's a strong application or, or you know, there's, this could improve in certain areas. Um, and also to um, not bring in outside information, just focus specifically on what's in the application. Thank you. Okay, if everyone is ready to move on, we will move on to the arts project support applications. And the first one is the Porcelain Art School of Indiana. And the reviewer, the first reader is Jamie Sweeney. Jamie? So I think the thing I was struck with for being um, an organization that's been doing this annual event for 40 years, it's just such an unusual and unique opportunity for people to participate in, in a very specialized arts program. And I found that to be really interesting. So um, it was, it's a good solid description of their program. And it seems like it runs really smoothly and um, it's well operated. And it just seems like a really exciting specialized event for Morgan County. Um, one area I thought um, might have some room for improvement is um, the community engagement section. I think they mentioned even in their in their application that um, it, it's pretty much the same uh, attendees, it seems like year after year, and mainly elderly or older, you know, like an aging population, I guess I would say. Um, they could could definitely um, try to work on cultivating new new love for this art because it's such an interesting art form and it's really unique. I, I'd have never, I, you know, just, it was very interesting to me to read this application. I, I thought it was awesome. Um, they have really skilled instructors uh, from all over the world, basically, that, you know, very specialized in China painting and um, that's a great opportunity for Indiana to have people that are specialized like that coming in. So I felt like the probably the biggest thing um, that that they could do is work on getting word out and trying to cultivate um, a new younger audience to join in so it doesn't just die off. Um, uh, they did mention that once in a while they ha they have their annual event focus on teenagers participating and I don't know if that's happening this year or not but it seems like that might be you know an, a really good way to get uh, to get a love for this art to continue and to grow is to bring in young people as much as possible um, the timeline is really well organized and efficient um, it doesn't really though what I saw in the timeline speak to uh, anything new happening this year it's it seems like it's basically year after year the same 
same offerings. I, I could be mistaken. Maybe that just wasn't um, brought up in the application if there's new offerings, but it didn't sound like there were. Um, you know, it's not surprising after 40 years, you fall into a pretty comfortable space, but it sounds to me to keep this organization going, they may want to consider um, going forward to really cultivate new, new audience members. I didn't see any mention of a student evaluation opportunity. They did mention that the, at the end of the um, week long project, the students can kind of talk about who they want to come back, like so they get to choose artists for the following year. Um, but I didn't really see any mention of an evaluation process on how that week was for the students. So that would be good to see. Um, in the marketing section of their, um, of their application, I thought the CBB link was a really good promotion. The Convention and Visitors Bureau did a good promotion for them. Um, their school, the school itself, their press release seemed pretty dated. And um, I feel like marketing, you know, in 2020 and beyond has to really stand out and catch the eye of potential new students. So it might be something that they want to consider um, getting some help with marketing. I know that's tricky if that's not your specialty. So maybe finding a board member or someone who can help them with that. Um, so I thought maybe perhaps budgeting for additional market marketing dollars would be a good way to cultivate new people with better marketing tools. Um, just on a personal note, I've been active in the arts community in Monroe County for years, decades, and I'd not heard of this event. So that says there might be a, a regional out, outreach that could be happen. Um, it's clearly a really, really well organized event. It sounds, looks like it kind of runs like clockwork. It has a clear budget with appropriate staffing to execute the classes for that week and to enter, you know, to not only educate, but entertain people with the firing sounds really neat to me. Um, but I would, ha would have enjoyed just a little bit more detail on the description of the five days of instruction, what that looks like, and also, uh, mentioning the what the teachers have submitted for projects this year. Um, I mean, they did touch on that, but maybe a little bit more information would have been interesting. It's just such a unique and interesting opportunity. So um, I just, I, I feel like it, since it's such a specialized art and it's such a unique opportunity and, you know, in a kind of more of a rural area, it would be nice to um, find ways to involve new people and create some exciting new marketing strategies. And I'd really love to see this organization really flourish and come to life and remain viable for many, many years to come. So that's my take. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, second reader is Sean Hildreth. Sean? Yeah, I had a similar uh, reaction to this group. I hadn't heard of it uh, in the region and um, seeing this kind of unique art form um, existing and in and, and such a well-organized and uh, well put together event. Uh, but I'm right there with Jamie. I'm, I'm, I want to reinforce, you know, I think that preserving this is a really noble effort and I'd like to see this art form preserved, but I think without some uh, modern marketing efforts and maybe outreach to uh, local and regional organizations to promote it, um, I think that they're kind of in a pattern of repeat, but um, it's, Seems like it's worked well, and um, it's it would be great to have them really focus in on getting the word out about their program in, in more modern ways. Their website is a little dated. Their social media does show um, a lot of the beautiful pieces, and um, I think that uh, you know cultivating younger um, artists and younger interest would be great. Uh, because of the demographics seems to skew, it says uh, um, older. Um, but I think uh, a regional marketing approach for a specialized art form like this would bring in probably enough audience to sustain it. Um, so I think that that is very important for the preservation and um, uh, future of this organization. I would have liked to have seen a little bit clearer picture of the financials. Um, you know, there is a clear budget outline for the program, uh, but just a little bit more in depth uh, financial report would have been uh, would be great um, but overall you know I'm very much in agreement with Jamie about the program it's great it's great to see it 
love to see it marketed better. And um, that's all I've got for today. Thank you, Sean. Are there any additional uh, comments or opposing views from any of the other panelists? I just yeah. had one observation about the scheduling. If they want to involve high school or college students, then September would not seem to be the best month to um, to schedule it. You know, if it were in the summertime when school's not in session, they could involve a lot more young people. Was there anything else? I thought I heard another voice. You did. That's Rebecca. Um, I was curious. I thought it was this, um, very unique that having this type of art provided in a uh, rural area um, and the mention of having students in Indiana, um, having a, a better understanding of um, what county or where the students are coming from. Um, would have added to the total picture. Thank you. Anything oh, additional? I have a quick uh, comment. Yeah, I just want to applaud them for being uh, for holding their their workshop at the Morgan County Fairgrounds. I think it's really great that they're embedding their project in the community in that way, and that just feels like a a really wonderful way to connect. So, just to applaud them for doing that. Great. Thank you. Anything additional? If not, then please take a few moments to finalize your scores and update any comments that you have and we'll move on in a moment. Okay, if no one needs additional time, we will move next to Shakespeare's ear. And we do have one uh, conflict on this. Elaine um, will be uh, sitting out for, this, for these uh, discussions, Elaine Barker. All right, Shakespeare's ear. Uh, Bryony, you are the first reader, please. Thank you. Uh, this was a straight up uh, application without a doubt. It was uh, very cohesively well put together and it seems like a fascinating project, especially in the way that students are drawn to make these connections between the past and the present as they learn and as they relate to the content. Um, there's great identification of the process and laying out the groundworks for the school and their staff to do work before the program actually begins and how to follow up. So I can see nothing but good coming out of this initial setup. It's like the perfect old toolkit. Um, so overall, this seems like a very solid project and it's clear in its mission and its audience and its process and its detailed goals. Excellent, okay. thank you. Uh, second reader, please, is uh, Jamie Sweeney. Yes, I, I totally back up that evaluation. Um, it was uh, really, really, really well-written and thorough uh, application. I appreciated that every single question that the IAC asks in its application had been addressed very thoroughly. Um, every aspect was was addressed and, and that was not the case on, on all the applications. So I appreciated that. Um, the project is extremely, very clearly laid out and it includes a really wide variety of participants over so many counties. And I like that so many young people benefit. I think they said it had 80, 850 students. I mean, that's, that's awesome. So it's a really big project and it seems extremely well put together. Um, and I like that it reaches out to rural counties and communities that are really in need of cultural awareness and arts opportunity. Having an art gallery in Owen County, in Indiana myself, I'm really aware of the lack of um, accessibility to arts as much as people want it and, and um, would like to have it. It's just not necessarily there for young people to um, engage with. I think one of the things I, 
saw that there's like but one art teacher that, or one teacher that teaches both art, music, and gymnasium. So it's it's like this is a really really beneficial project. I saw that Spencer Elementary School is um, having a residency, and um, McCormick's Creek Elementary will have a program. So as as someone where Owen County is near and dear to my heart and um, bringing arts and culture to rural to rural communities, it's just really important to me. So I thought that was really a, a strong point. Um, the marketing materials they presented were just outstanding. I think they clearly have a very good um, staff of, of board and all the things that takes to put this together. It's very well done. So the other thing that I just want to say is the the request on the IAC is that reaching out to underserved populations was was very much part of their goal and their mission and that they're doing that. Um, and I just feel like they are fostering a lifelong appreciation for the arts and opportunity for growth that the arts offer to people. So um, yeah, I just, it was a great, great application and great project. Thank you, Jamie. Are there additional or opposing comments from any of the other panelists? I just was um, excited about the possibility of providing after school programs in the future. Um, so it's future direction and, and um, comes from the experiences and the success of the program. Thank you, Rebecca. Anything else? If not, please finalize your scores and update any online comments that you want and we will move on in a moment. I'm back. You're back, welcome. All right, we will move on uh, to the Rotating School Mural Project. And Rebecca Ball, you are the first reader. Okay, I'm gonna bring that up. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, I thought overall this project is, is a great project and you know you see murals all over communities and, and the uniqueness of the art. Um, I, I appreciated for um, both community engagement, the fact that school personnel um, were providing feedback on it so that it would be relevant to the educational purposes um, and displayed at their schools. Um, what I um, had some confusion over in reading is there's really not a description on how the learning experience of student involvement from each of the schools um, in creating the murals with paint and then displayed in the schools. Um, and, and, and that part of that goes back to um, the timing of the um, youth involvement in, in developing, after speaking to the um, school administrators and um, the process of painting the murals, they're, the summer time frame um, was unusual for me and then I felt that that involvement was crucial, but it was during the hours of summertime. So reaching out to that, that group, I didn't know how much um, involvement would be included in that. Um, the community engagement, um, when I looked at, they spoke about, you know, reaching out to the um, school administrators and involving the students. Um, 
and through the partner schools involving the students was again a little confusing because of the timeline of July through August or yeah, July through August. Um, and then when I looked at the number of um, children estimated to participate along with the one artist, it, um, I had a hard time with that um, and trying to look at youth involvement in education in that. Um, then in looking at the personal um, personal budget, um, the project um, the, the project's um, expenses in the matching funds is that the, the grant um, and the cost of the first rounds of murals, the grant is to offset. I was confused by what that first grant, what that offset spending would be for the first round of murals. Um, and um, maybe it's because I'm old and I do not understand um, the initial marketing offset expenses and crowdfunding service is, I'm unsure about that. Um, and my question was, is there a commitment from the patronicity crowd grant service? I like the overall idea. I think it's a great idea. I think that I would have worked a little bit more on the community involvement. So any feedback panelists have would possibly help in my review. All right, thank you, Rebecca. Uh, Elaine Barker, your second reader. Sure, I'll jump in. I, I agree that this um, is a somewhat confusing proposal. I, I also agree that it's a great idea. I, I think that the fundamentals of the idea are very, very strong and it would be wonderful to see this succeed. Um, I, there was confusion in my mind about when this project would actually happen. It seems to me that the summer activity is preliminary and that um, in other parts of their narrative they were talking about engaging with the, the school system and the Boys and Girls Club over a longer period of time. And I was just imagining that putting this project together and making it work would actually take probably as long as a year to, to, to implement. There was a lot of discussion in the narrative about co-creating these designs with students. Um, and so obviously it, it, it would be impractical for them to, to just do this in the summer. So I was confused there. I'm also, um, I, I like the, the the foundation of artistry, the fact that a, a professional artist is working um, as a sort of a mentor and, de and designer of the overall concept and yet at the same time very um, connected to student artistry um, as these uh, murals um, evolve. I like that. I like the idea that they were exchanging the murals between the schools and I also like the fact that this is a project that um, includes Bloomington, Ellettsville and Franklin, that it's sort of an expanded concept. Um, just in terms of the implementation, I also agree that um, the budget looked a little sort of confusing to me. Um, it seems to me from looking between the lines that they that they're that they're looking at a sort of a firm commitment of somewhere in the region of about ten thousand dollars, but then anything beyond that is sort of hopes and aspirations. Um, and so I would like to see a, a, a clearer sense of exactly how they're going to get from one point to the other. Uh, with their with their budget. Um, and then just finally, in terms of the relationships with the community schools um, and the Boys and Girls Club, I didn't see any confirmation that this indeed was something that the schools and the Boys and Girls Club had committed to. So I don't know whether this is a project that's just been developed as an idea, or if it's a project that's already in process. I, I couldn't work out um, between those two. But I do think it's a great project. And of course, I would I would love to see this this happen. All right, thank you, Elaine. Uh, other opposing views or new uh, comments, please? Hi, uh, I 
think the way I read it is that this is aspirational. This is something that they want to do. And this is, these are all the ideas that they're putting together. Um, and that's how I read the financials and the overall project to answer to Elaine's question. Um, you know, it's aims that that's a bit of how they operate. It's like, okay, we have an idea, let's try and make it work, put it together, and then they move forward. Um, versus contacting like the Boys and Girls Club and other entities before they actually have the funds and the backing for it. Other comments? I need to make a quick comment. My cat just came in with a big chipmunk in its mouth. So <laughs> I have something to deal with real quick. But um, I did want to say that I found it to be rather confusing. Um, I don't really understand the budget. Uh, I, I thought that um, the membership fees were kind of, I just didn't understand it, I guess. Um, I also thought that the, um, where they say that one artist would be involved, I think that should have been really listed as two because Adam Nahas will, Nahas will be also involved. So that ratio of one student to 20, or one, 20 students to one teacher really looked to me like it'd be 20 students to two teachers. So it, that, that kind of makes it a little bit more appealing as well. Um, that's it. I think it's a great plan and I love the creative thinking. And I need to go get this chipmunk out of my room real quick. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, this is Rowena. I, uh, as I read this, it's 20 kids in Bloomington who are painting everything with an artist, and then the panels get rotated other places. And I didn't really get why you wouldn't have the kids in different places paint different panels and then sort of swap them out you know it's like all the all the joy of creativity goes to these kids in Bloomington and what the partner schools if I understood this correctly what the partner schools get is finished art is is that correct was that everybody else's understanding because it seems like a missed opportunity for the kids in Ellisville and Franklin and they said there would be 10 partner schools um they aren't all named but it just seems like the partners are not really partners, you know? Can I quickly just jump in there? My feeling is that the, um, the confusion is because parts of the narrative um, describe pretty in-depth collaboration with all the schools and then other parts of the, uh, the, the narrative or description identify just the Bloomington uh, schools. And so I think that the, I, my reading, just to quickly let you know, that my, my interpretation was that the intent was to collaborate as much as possible with the schools. And that maybe that they just need to go through their, their descriptions to clear that up. So you think that it's not just 20 kids in Bloomington? It's yeah, my sense is that, that they're connecting with schools, they're working collaboratively with schools, and that the kids in those schools are participating in the project. But that's, that's just my interpretation. That would definitely be a, a better project, in my humble opinion. Anything additional? If not, then please finalize your scores and update any of your online comments and we'll take a minute before we move on. All right, the next application is the pegasusinstitute.org and Elaine Barker, you are the first reader. Okay, so um, this is a fantastic project. I, I'm very impressed with the organization. It's, uh, it's an organization that's been around now for four years in Bloomington and, and uh, bringing some serious um, expertise and ability and strength to, um, to, to, to the environment. Um, and as you can see, uh, they, they have a good sense of what it is to build an organization um, that has impact um, and that, that has a variety of activities that are both um, training, educational, artistically uh, responsive to telling stories in Indiana that, that um, hopefully would make a big difference going forward. Um, this is an area in Indiana that I think there's a bit of a gap, filmmaking, and they're, they're trying to fill it. 
And so this, this project sort of sits in the middle of that greater um, mission as an organization. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a competition, it's already in motion. And so this is actually interesting in comparison to a previous one. This is less aspirational than it is implementational. Uh, where, they're, where they're looking for funds and support to essentially continue the work that they've already put in motion. Um, impacting uh, a good cross-section of adults, children, and, and uh, working artists. Um, the competition um, sits in, in, in uh, motion, uh, a, a, a project that um, enables students to benefit a lot from training in, in the world of, of film. And, and so I'm, I'm, I feel that this is a very strong proposal all the way around. My only uh, question, and this is perhaps you know, uh, immaterial, but since this is already in motion, um, the budget elements that they supplied to us were somewhat limited. Um, and I would have loved to have seen a much more comprehensive overview of the project in the proposal that detailed both their um, cash uh, activities as well as in kind, um, just so that I, I get a better sense of, of what this is about. But, but overall, I think this is a, a very interesting organization doing really good work. And this project sits in the middle of their, of their, um, their mission as an organization. So I gave it high marks. Okay, thank you very much, Elaine. Uh, the second reader is Rebecca Ball. Rebecca? Hey. Um, I, it, uh, again, I think it's unique in, in um, working with communities that are connected and in, in sharing uh, um, Indiana stories um, through, um, through films. Um, I thought that was excellent to be able to do that. Um, it would be... I think the art, artists involved is great. I would have a better understanding if I knew the background description of the artist involved um, and how it is um, showcased uh, around the state. I um, believe the uh, community engagement. It really does sound like there's strong involvement in a variety of community entities. Um, the confusion for me is um, the involvement of the communities and how that relates to um, selecting where the film is going to be produced, the winner, versus the community's involvement for everyone that's participating, the communities that are participating. Um, but overall, the artistic development in the completed film is awesome. All right, thank you, Rebecca. Are there any additional or opposing comments from any of the other panelists? Brian? I find that the overall project sounds amazing and as it's been stated the two sides that i'm lacking a little bit more information on is how they go about finding and reaching out reaching these kids and how do they go through a selection process if they have too many to participate in the project or how they go about um, truly engaging with these underserved areas um, and locating these kids and also the financial documentation was somewhere between confusing and lacking for me. I wanted, I, I wanted to see something a little bit more robust given the depth and uh, scale of the project. Thank you. Anything I that what I was it able to add, Jan, to my comments is that I found that there was missing detail description of what post-production includes and how that funding is used in post-production. And I'm not sure I picked them up on a project timeline. And, and one more thing I'll just quickly add in is the, um, I'll just read from my notes here. I'd like to see information on how the film would be distributed 
and how it's accessible to audiences through a plan of showings. I didn't see a plan of, of how, to, how to actually get the film out into audiences uh, with the idea that underserved uh, members of our, of our state or community would, would, would uh, be interested and I think benefit from seeing the film. I had some, some issues with this proposal as well. I didn't see how the community was providing input. I didn't see anything about really diversity, you know, with respect to um, sort of racial diversity and poverty. The big issue is no evaluation plan um, that I could see. Um, I had some some problems with the links. I did manage to find the like the Facebook page and stuff and really liked them when I got there, but I, I couldn't get there through the links that were provided. And then just really vague on the management of the project, um, staffing, workflow distribution, the timeline, financial statements. Love the idea, you know, it sounds great, uh, but uh, I could have really used a lot more detail in the proposal. Thank you. Anything additional? Yeah, I would I would back up Rowena on that um, evaluation not being very clear. I I was um, I love this idea, and I actually have a little bit of firsthand experience with it. Being in Owen County last year, um, there was a young woman who was selected and did a project in Spencer, and it was like the whole town came to life. She was so excited and thrilled, and I mean I've never seen a child I don't think so excited, and the you know the whole video crew was out there and it just it was really a neat experience so um i think they do a great thing and it's a great um project i've seen how it works um i just felt like some of their answers were were big and i also felt like they well their links didn't work all as, as rowena said and that they were using um websites and and um and their finished product, the video, to answer questions rather than answer questions. Like I thought you answer the question in the grant application and then you use the videos for backup. And I kind of felt like the videos were being used as the answer. So that's just a, a minor detail, but I think that the, um, you know, listening to everybody, we all kind of felt a little vague about some of this. So that might be because video was being used to answer rather than actually the written word being used to help us understand a little better. So all in all, great, great project. And I just think it needs to be refined just a bit to, you know, just to make it clearer to us when we're trying to evaluate. Great, thank you. Anything additional? If not, then please finalize your scores and update any online comments and we'll move to the final application in a moment. All right, the last application is Owen County Sounds and the first reader is Jamie Sweeney. Okay, so Owen County Sounds is um, a really important organization to Owen County and they serve not only Owen County, but some students in Monroe and Green as well. Um, one of the things I feel really makes them so important is that there isn't another string opportunity for string instrument um, education for students who wish to pursue that other than this program. Um, Unfortunately, I was going to have the Owen County Sounds, a couple of people play for my spring exhibit uh, reception at Juniper Art Gallery. And then, of course, everything kind of got changed and I didn't get to have that happen. I was really looking forward to it. So I love that they're very community minded, um, excited to work with um, you know, organizations within the community and bring their strings out and um, just provide that. As a parent, in a personal note, my daughter was involved in string um, program at in Monroe County Schools from fifth grade through her senior year in high school, and I can just vouch for how important that was in her life, uh, what camaraderie was uh, made, and her, she still to this day is friends with 
with her friends from orchestra. So I can really vouch to that. As far as the application goes, um, I was a little confused a bit on the budget. Um, they, they haven't, you know, they, they asked for a certain amount of money, um, $2,000, but uh, for pian piano, piano accompanists for the students as they're learning. Um, but then when I look at the budget, I see that there's $400 allocated to the pianists. And they also mention the music fees for the junior music festival at IU. Um, and that was 350. So that's 750. And I, I just wasn't clear on where the other 1250 was, um, how it was going to be allocated. Um, not to say it's not well deserved. It just it wasn't clear to me. So that was one thing. Um, I also wondered about uh, in in the expense section um, or income, I think it was the there's a student fee expense and I, I didn't know if they offer scholarships. Do the students have to pay to be in this program? Do they have to have, provide their own instruments or are there rental instruments available? There's just things that um, would be interesting to know. So I, I didn't really understand the $5,200 student fee. Um, it just makes a difference to me to know if students are paying for the program or if it's something that's uh, provided through the school system for free. Um, I thought if they are having to charge students to participate, which I don't know, perhaps uh, future asking for more grant, grant money um, since they can ask for up to 5,000 to try to help more underserved people be able to be involved in the program. And that's just me not knowing if that's already available or not. Um, also just the personnel expense of $6,000 says artistic personnel expense. And I just, I assume that's for the instructor. I just wasn't clear on that either. Um, so just, uh, I was wondering as far as questions go, are all students who wish to participate able to participate? Is that the way the program works? And um, then I've already mentioned, are there rent rental instruments available to those who can't afford to purchase their own? Um, but all in all, I just say this is a really, really, really worthy project and I was really happy to be asked to review it. Thank you, Jamie. The second reader is Rowena. Well, I agree with Jamie that it's important to have something like this in, in Owen County. I think access to music instruction is a great advantage to be able to give the kids. Um, I had a little confusion with the artists or the artistic, uh, however it was put, are these the accompanists? Because the project is all about paying for accompanists as I understand it. And, and you know, we had two different budgets there's the Owen County sounds budget and then there's the project budget. So I'm, I gathered that Owen County sounds does more than just this project, but um, I was a little confused by that. Um, it's definitely an underserved community and if they can keep the cost down for the students, that'll definitely lower barriers to bar barriers to participation. Um, the proposal didn't really discuss an evaluation plan uh, that I saw. I thought their Facebook page was just adorable. Um, good job there. And um, it would be good to know how much instruction each child receives in a single year. Like I assume it's a certain number of hours, but that wasn't really clear. And Jamie, you talked about the cost to the child. It seems to me from my calculations that each child would be paying out about $347 to participate which over the course of the period is not a lot, but it could be enough to keep students from participating. And you're right, you know, no discussion of scholarships or anything like that. So that would be helpful to know. All right, thank you, Rowena. Are there additional or opposing comments from any of the other panelists? Jenna, I have one confusion. Um, and in considering the budget that was submitted, it really revolves around looking at the concert program where community businesses are purchasing boxes. Um, and I'm assuming that um, that could be a um, concert cost um, or, or concert income if someone's purchasing a box. Um, 
And if that would be the case, um, the positive income that would be coming in, I did not see how it was possibly reported in the grant budget. I'm not sure if others looked at that. Any other comments? Any additional information there? No, I just want to throw an idea. Um, th this is an area that I, I've, I've come to know quite a bit about uh, since I've been also working with the Center for Rural Engagement. And uh, one of the things that I've noticed, and I've, n I've seen this project um, develop over the years, and I'm really very happy to see that it it's there and that it continues to serve the community in the ways that it does. Um, one of the uh, things that strikes me about it is that it seems a very contained project, um, utilizing some of the talent from uh, pianists, collaborative pianists from the Jacobs School of Music and whatnot. But I, um, I'm thinking that one, one of the ways to strengthen this organization, and perhaps something that they could be thinking about now, is to seek out partnership uh, relationships with higher education institutions to uh, feed off the strength of those programs and to help um, uh, this project become more sustainable over the long run. Um, so, you know, sort of try and move away from the sort of the, 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 the closed insular feel to a more open connection to a set of relationships in the region. And that was just, that's just a suggestion that I want to throw in there. Thank you, Elaine. Anything further? All right, please finalize your scores and update any online comments. Uh, this concludes the Indiana Arts Commission Region 8 Combined Arts Organization Support and Arts Project Support uh, panel. Applicants will be notified of the status of their grant following all statewide grant scores being analyzed by the Indiana Arts Commission staff. If you have any questions, please contact your Region 8, Region 8 Arts partner, Larry Pujol. Thank you all. Um, be safe out there and have a great, great afternoon. Thank you.